<sighs> what up, random rockers? This is a little bit of a late one. I had a few days to kind of sit with it. And... This is Spider-Man Far From Home. The 23rd film of the MCU. The second film with Tom Holland as well as not only of the MCU involved... Well, well, technically fourth film with Tom Holland Spider-Man. Actually, second in the second in the series of Spider-Man films since the merger between them and Sony for the for the rights of Spider-Man. The eighth overall Spider-Man film in the film franchise, I guess you should say, or at least while Sony still kind of has it. If we're also including the recent animated film Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Um, and yeah, so far it seems that the one constant thing that makes this work is your main antagonist, I mean, probably being a protagonist, I should say, played by Tom Holland, has been the perfect blending of both Peter Parker and Spider-Man, for once. Um, we didn't get to fully see that when it came to Civil War, it wasn't until Homecoming happened that it did happen. And after, and then this being the follow-up of that film, but also following up Endgame. This film, I will already say, initially, overall, this film is more better as an MCU film. As opposed to being a Spider-Man film, but it's still, as a Spider, even as a Spider-Man film, a damn good one. Especially with a solid villain. When finally a villain that's never been not only has this villain never been used in the Spider-Man films, but it's also one that final that when you finally get a chance to do it, you finally get a chance to do it right. Granted, certain aspects of it will wind up, especially a certain reveal will come across very similar to a particular Iron Man film, ironically enough. Given that the only issue this this film will this in terms of spoiling the actual movie itself, there is none. The only thing you need to know about this fi the, that is spoiler-ish is because you must have seen Endgame. If you haven't, it's your own dang fault at this point. Because let's the big a big thing that had happened and is a big prominent character towards this version of Spider-Man through this through MCU. And this particular Peter, which is clearly more closer to Ultimate, but it's Ultimate Spider-Man, Peter Parker, as well as certain aspects, I guess, from Miles Morales' story, technically. I might, which I believe I had mentioned in the Homecoming vid, uh, which I believe might have been with my ex. Uh, check that out if you... Despite all that, check that out if you will. This is really darn good. Good, good film, and Jake Gyllenhaal kicks kicks butt as Mysterio. All, all, all around, all around. There's a certain way you could approach this, and it all, and it really more depends on if you're a general audience as opposed to someone who is a diehard co fan of Spider-Man, and yet alone even a diehard fan of Mysterio, and already knows how that character is already in the comics. Because that'll also de that'll will definitely take bring about that. In fact, I will give into, get into that later. I will let you know when it's time to get into spoilers, but not yet. Right now, uh, he heals it. Zendaya, um, Mashiki's playing the current MJ, uh, Zendaya, whatever her name is, actual name is, or is that the the MJ character here? I don't know anymore. Uh, but they do give her a more as opposed to being what MJ actually is in the comic books, which they've already kind of pretty much established as it is via the Raimi series more so. We could have got something with Cheyenne Woodley had things not been butchered in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 and worked its things worked itself out and didn't become a mess. Even though I'm not entirely sh sure that movie is as bad as... Where it... When it comes to that movie, I don't know between that and with 3. 3 took a while to catch on. I didn't hate it as much, although I was a little disappointed in how they did with Venom there. 
even though the Venom movie slightly does a better job of Venom than the Venom there, but it just, it's still not enough, and better off just watching Upgrade. But anyway, over in this film, in this film here, uh, we don't know when Sony, if Sony's going to take back at some point. Hopefully not. Uh, we don't know until Comic-Con happens within a week from now what's going to happen and after what seeing this film. I am curious. We'll get into more of that. Spoilers. Uh, the character of Ned, which I'm guessing from the name, his character is essentially gank, is essentially gank, but his name in, in char as a character is a he's essentially hobgoblin, though I'm not sure they're going to go that route. Be interesting if they did, but I don't know. And uh, we don't know if Oscorp's going to find a way to take over certain par parts of Stark Industries or maybe Stark Tower. I don't know. Or at least it seems there's potential possibility of that. And there's a lot of certain things and certain cameos, though no Stan Lee cameo, but a reference to him and Ditko at the end. Which is not really a spoiler, necessarily. But if you're... what, if, But if you're... Our, it's, this is... If you're looking to know... If you're wondering if Stan Lee makes a cameo here... It, it, you may have to watch it multiple times, because I don't know if it's actually there, because usually when they do, it's obvious. But they didn't do anything with this one here, so... Which is unfortunate. This will be the first of many, probably, of many films nowadays that will no longer... Not only an MCU, but just Marvel in general, that will know, besides maybe Dark Phoenix. I guess. Yeah, amongst those films, I guess. That will no longer have a Stan Lee cameo. Uh, at this point, or at least no, at least aside from End Endgame, there is probably no other film out right now, Marvel-wise, here in the year of two. Uh, besides Captain Marvel and Endgame, that Marvel-wise, it's probably better off that they stopped that stopped it at Endgame. It would, it's perfect there. Especially, it's perfect there. It would have been more perfect with Captain Marvel the way they handled that, especially if your name was Kevin Smith. Here, none of that, which is which is so unfortunate. But at least they gave and paid a homage somewhere in the credits. Uh, so I'm just gonna just tell you that right off the bat. If you're looking for it, you know, if this whether or not that's not it's not exactly spoiler. It's just something you guys need to actually know. So, which I mean, it's kind of bad news given. But so it was already technically bad news by the, when he died, figuring that stuff out, so... Yeah. <sighs> Still bums me out, but... At least he's... Was kind of sort of, I guess, in live when... I mean, Endgame was kind of filmed around the same time frame as... Um, Infinity War, so I guess it worked itself out, so that Endgame would be the final film. I don't... I don't think he was in Endgame. I don't think he was in Infinity War, though. I'm not sure. But, I think he might have been, but I can't remember. Anyways, I... I really... I enjoyed this film. Uh, I don't know if I could... It's... I'm definitely not going to say I would pick... Enjoy this over Into the Spider-Verse for what it did. As... Uh, so... And that's animated. But as far as live-action films are concerned, the Tom Holland films are still, I think, far superior. There are still some debates all over the internet when it comes to whether or not so Spider-Man 2 should be more superior. But that's really more so, not even so much Tobey Maguire's performance as it is really Sam Raimi's direction, the score story, and the actor, whose name I'm forgetting, that played Doc Ock. That's the reason why I would understand some people that would do so for Spider-Man 2, without question. But I would still just, but just off of Tom Holland's performance, he's clearly proven to finally be the Spider-Man, the perfect Peter Parker Spider-Man we've always wanted, and they've proven that. And he's nerding out, and he's doing gadget stuff. It's, it's, it's awesome. You also get a few like possible Easter eggs, I guess, here and there when it comes to like the costumes and stuff. And I think there might be even a nod to Alex Ross, uh, but. Uh, Let's see, uh, there's like, I'm kind of eh when it comes to like the one, the two teachers played by J.B. Smooth and forgetting the other guy's name, that actor. Forgive me for that, but yeah, I, I mean, the teachers were fine in that film and it wasn't as, they were just mostly played for laughs. It kind of worked. Uh, it's definitely still feels more of a comedy. 
definitely in the rom-com, but and I feel like they're still keeping in tone with what they've been doing since Homecoming. Um, and it definitely does have its moments where it does get serious, and you have these moments where you're like, especially later on after a certain something-something where you're like, Dane, you actually feel like, can Spider-Man get through this? You know? Uh, and that's that said, does say something. That definitely says something about about the way they approached this the, the, that particular scene, which was classic of that character. Just and uh, a lot of things are revealed that were already in the trailer. That well, I may talk it more in spoiler, but I'm gonna just say it, I may just say it here anyway. Uh, they didn't need to do the reveal in, uh, if you see, especially if you have, but that also depends on if you've seen Endgame. So this isn't really so much a spoiler in the movie necessarily since it was in the trailer if you've seen the Endgame trailer. And that's, of course, if you've seen the movie Endgame. At this point, y'all know Tony Stark is gone and Peter's just mourning, dealing with that, and he's trying to live up to this. Like, they're being trying to tout him as, like, the next Iron Man type thing. And he's got to live up to this sort of pedestal. When all he wants to do is just go on vacation, be, be a kid, go on vacation, you know. Just try to be a kid and go on vacation and do all these things. As opposed to, and while Fury and all of them are involved and kind of befriends Jake Gyllenhaal's mis Quentin Beck Mysterio throughout all this thing. And just the way they handle this stuff, it's really cool. I can't say that the way the reveal is done, I do feel it's a better executed version of some other particular movie like Iron Man 3, but I wouldn't say that that twist hits and throws you for a loop like it, like what happened with the, uh, with Michael Keaton's approach to Vulture in Homecoming, but it works. Because main, but it still works despite, and I think it helps a lot if you're more general audience as opposed to a massive comic book fan and actually know enough about Mysterio. Yet alone have actually been around and seen the '90s cartoon with Mysterio involved, which was Mysterio as a villain was more involved in compared to some of the other cartoons. So, yeah, that's kind of what you need to have, and um, and there's a lot of cool things that happen in the within this movie and. The way they do approach certain things, like, you know, why they, like, they've mentioned it in the trailers with how they handle things there. So, but, overall, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is a darn good film. And in comparison to what we wound up getting, not only, in, not so much just, not so much within Captain Marvel, as a, as I would rather say Emma and the Wasp having followed up Infinity War... This was a nice follow-up to, not only follow-up to Endgame, but a way to cap off Phase 4 and the entire Infinity Saga as best as you can, while sort of, but in a way that's more so served as sort of like that prelude of like that epilogue slash prelude, epilogue of it slash prelude into the next, into the next thing, but more so through what's going on with Spider-Man. Happy Hogan's played in there. You don't really see much of uh, Marissa Tomei's uh, Aunt May. They don't really do as much with her in the film. And it's really more just kind of doing certain romance things that are played for laughs. And on top of that, which is part of the thing that happened with uh, Ned, they, one of the other characters. And we find out a bunch of other things. Which is spoiling the beginning from Endgame. Uh, and uh, which I'm now going to try to do actual spoilers in three and three two one you've been warned all right yeah the reveal of how what had actually happened and i kind of figured was going to happen all the kids that were involved in his class at the very least or at least of the main characters mostly the ones that needed to be in main characters were and and even apparently aunt may maybe happy i guess i guess they were all essentially affected by what they refer to as the blimp, which was essentially the snap, the Thanos snap from Infinity War in that five-year time gap. So some of them got held back, though. One kid involved in seems who was probably five years held back or something. 
got had been pushed up in high school or whatever. So she got to, so I mean, he got to, and he winds up be taking uh, Flash's places. Even though Flash still kind of does his little thing, though he does, and like what happened in the trailers where he does get little n nice little uh, <laughs> dick punch. <laughs> Uh, while he always trying to do his his blog his vlog thing or some YouTube vlog or Twitter vlog thing or whatever he's doing, and uh, a lot of and the post creds you have to like I forgot to mention the post in the non spoiler post creds you have to stay for I'm going to talk about those as well and the the reveal is of course Mysterio as the actual villain. But it's not just him, it's an entire crew of people, and the bigger reveal is that he was actually involved in a particular project that was mentioned in Civil War. Uh, the glasses that are that are the MacGuffin of this entire film, Edith, which they love the acronym for it, which I can't exactly remember it off the top of my head at this point. Uh, forgive me, you can tell me in the comments below if you'd like, that's fine, just don't be a dick about it. Which is a lot, still saying a lot, I guess, when it comes to YouTube comments. But anyway, I really did dig this, just dug this. D dug the way they did it. I was happy the way they did it. They approached it pretty well. Jill and all, it's essentially worked because Jill, he has the charisma. Quentin Beck's character has that kind of charisma. He looked, Mysterio's design looked great. And the costume looked great. Um... At least better than what was the original initial design. The fact that it looked really, even with the fishbowl and everything, it looked really dang good. Um, I love the reveal that everything they've been dealing with was, of course, of course, innocent illusion. Fuck you, kind of a thing. Uh, with Quentin Beck, and of course, his character comes out very similar to his role in Nightcrawler, which was messed up and insane, and his approach about it. Um, and he's basically a more egotistical and even more evilish Tony Stark. And the whole point was just to, and I kind of knew it was coming the moment the Edith glasses thing happened with that. And Peter's approach to dealing with that, the whole blimp thing. And so all the class members were like that. And she's trying to figure out things with Mary Jane while trying to go on this whole uh, world field trip, which winds up getting hijacked by Nick, which Nick Fury hijacks. Fury and what is sort of of S.H.I.E.L.D., I guess, gets hijacked, that we know of at least, is, the uh, being are still around, it has been hijacked by them, them so that he can get involved in figure and dealing with all this chaos with all these elementals or whatever that they're dealing with, so, that are trying to destroy the, and... I love the reveal that the whole thing was, of course, just as expected when it comes to the character, if you know him. Like, it's a whole thing's an illusion, and part of the illusion tech that they were creating, mostly through, like, drones and stuff, and they got even more out of it by fi figuring out how to... The Edith glasses are basically all control of everything, and those are exact... And the glasses were basically Project Barf or whatever, which Mysterio was involved with that project and hated that he did with it. And then got fired for it because of his own egotistic, because of his own egotism, or just his own instability, and which you definitely see here. And apparently, another character, way far back into Iron Man One, comes back, and that's the dude that was essentially helping. Uh, what's his face? Uh, that was what's his face that wound up being technically Iron Munger, trying to help him figure that out, and. I guess wound up because of it, got fired for it, I guess. Uh, and he winds up playing a big part, bigger part, and it's also the actor that play, winds up having to be the actor that played the kid in, um, in the holiday classic film, uh, Christmas Story. Uh, and apparently it's him growing up, it's adult him, that actor playing this, that same exact character. And that bring and it all basically and all these other people were just people that were employed by Stark and they finally and now they basically have full control of the, everything and are and he's trying to make himself look even more like he's supposed to be the hero when he's just doing when he's and no matter the casualties all this other thing and and the way he's approached done and he and it's approached with him 
And it's when it, and it definitely comes off very similar to the character that he did with Nightcrawler, which is part of the reason why I think he was asked to do the role. And of course, he loved. It. Plus, he, apparently, the actor Jake Gyllenhaal loves being able to play it and being able to cut loose like that. And, you, and he, his approach, and especially when it came to the, the eventual reveal of the whole illusion scene, when after he figures it out, and they play it off so damn good, it definitely feels like classic Mysterio. It's it's even probably even far better than the weird trippy scene in Doctor Strange. It's kind of a thing, but it's far crazier, and it works to the point where you you actually fear for Spider-Man in in this instance. Like, how is he gonna fight this off? You know, and you definitely get and you understand he went through some shit, especially when he goes and finally meets back up with Hogan, with Happy Hogan, and asks him about it. In that little, they play it's a lot of things some here for less, but they do do get a little serious in places, like what ha especially when it comes to dealing with Mysterio. He was great in this film, and when he, he gets involved in his story and how he interacts with Peter up until the reveal, and even after the reveal, is amazing. It's amazingly done, and definitely shows how good, like, he is definitely, like, Mysterio just itself is a solid villain. And, of course, he, it's unfortunate that he winds up having to be dead, you know, but... Or at least it seems he is, I think he actually is, and that everyone else that was involved in helping him that clearly no that clearly Peter didn't put into account to at all uh, winds up coming up with this backup plan to doctor the footage that winds up playing being a post grid scene where eventually he works things out with MJ uh, certain things happen with this one kid that's trying to blackmail him and he tried to deal with it when it came to the youth classes did and it was a misunderstanding he was just trying to he wasn't trying to kill him he was trying to basically erase the photo of what had happened when he was trying to change into the suit that start that was given to him through one of the agents and it just looked uh. so and i really enjoyed what they did with it and it's it's all it's just amazing how they how they pulled off the cg before that is amazing it works super well especially when they finally get in through the illusion area the illusion in london and through with because of the drones which makes it even more relatable with how drones are nowadays especially given also drone strikes things involving drone strikes so that really was good definitely helpful in subject matter and the way technology is and his approach towards it will definitely and this whole illusion thing may play a massive part in what might happen in the next next saga in phase four and the next new and the new saga we're going to be getting not sure what they will call it i don't know if we're dealing with galactus what what's the deal with that uh, i really I, I don't think we'll get enough enough of a picture and idea until we find out what phase four is going to be about going um when uh, Comic-Con happens, we're going to finally get a reveal. And we all know that's what's going to happen. It's just what exactly it is is what's really going to be interesting. And, uh, and, uh, and even more so, especially given what they chose to do for Spider-Man. Not only Spider-Man's side of things and him learning to overcome these things and be his own man and not try to be this pedestal that Tony Stark put him has been put up on and I love him and Hogan's exchange involving it and I do love that the black costume is essentially more of a closer to the noir costume uh, which you do see in the trailers which you kind of do see but don't see I think is the newer spider-man costume he winds up creating himself which is essentially the new, uh, the Alex Ross design of red and black which looks really nice really 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 nice very nice uh, or at least it comes off more like the alex ross maybe slight cross slightly reverse ish version of uh miles morales us uh, approach costume kind of sort of ish i guess Kind of, well, not really, but you know, I mean, maybe, maybe certain apps. I don't know. And mostly Alex Ross's costume, which I love that. Shout out on that. Uh, they still also had the Iron Spider suit earlier in the film. Apparently, 
the way that they uh, we don't get to see what happened with him and her and how they know or at least get a chance to kind of understand what happened between the two of them since the end of Homecoming. So that, eh. and you know, him ghosting Nick Fury. I loved how Happy, even Happy, approached Fury, which when we find out later on, it just becomes less impressive when it comes to the certain trade scenes, which definitely, which that one isn't sort of played for last, but also kind of serious and actually is a good uh, plot building or at least good idea scope of world of scope of world or universe building so to speak um and uh, the the end of the film the things work out with them and they get to swinging and and the first time she swings him around things are finally in his favor and then that mid cred scene happens where he we see, and the biggest thing isn't even so much what happens, as in who tells it. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone who's seen, who's the one to mind that no one complained about the Rami films, is the is the, perf the perfect casting choices of who J. Jonah Jameson was. And that was J.K. Simmons. He is back as a Alex Jones type Infowars ish type of, or at least the Daily Bugle is more an online thing and online internet thing via like Alex Jones thing, which makes perfect sense for that character anyway. And it's a different look, though his looks kind of sort of similar to the to Commissioner Gordon, really. But you could, but it still feels like he's back as J.J. Jameson, and he hasn't missed a fucking beat. And he's giving the announcement from what he's been given from whoever was involved in in Mysterio's posse. See, or per se, that helped because he definitely is uh, the charisma that Jay and all had, and it's clear he the way he approached it was perfect. I loved the way they handled it, and. The relationship between him and NJ and this one just works. It works. And you also see how uh, things between uh, Ned and the one girl, Brienne or whatever her name is. Uh, I could be mis mistaken in that for spelling this one. But anyway, she, they loved how they handled her, handled that, that sort of relationship. More for laughs saying, and I understand it worked, but it, he wasn't as significant as he was in Homecoming because they wanted to focus more on Zendaya and well, actually understanding more of why she is as a who she is as a character and I love what they did with her. Uh, or at least gave the layers they gave her. And I hope we still get a little bit of that or at least some essence of, of it even if it's not much going into the next film which I'm, fingers crossed, I'm banking on the Sinister Six. Especially with the setup they have going into it. Or like... Especially with the setup that they have in the mid-creds, that the big reveal, the entire world now knows his entire identity, and he's being framed for what Mysterio did. Mysterio just had us, just makes, all the more makes him an even better villain in the MCU. More through this, making his care him an even better villain in the MCU. Maybe not to the extent of Thanos. But maybe putting him on par with the likes of something like Lo that of Loki or even um, uh, why am I blanking on the Black Panther character? Here during Black Panther. Uh, Warmonger. I think it's... I, yeah, yeah. I think it's Warmonger. Uh, yeah. How they handled him? Uh, perfect. Perfect. Um, no, no, uh, Killmonger, not Warmonger, Killmonger, sorry. How they handled, uh, those were the best to have so far remain, he's, like, Jill Hall's through performance in this has, uh, in a way, elevated him, at least up there, even if most people will still probably prefer Loki or, and, or, even though he... Even though I feel like it's like a reverse, it's almost taking what, Lo a mix between the Loki... 
be but through a similar reveal to man with Mandarin, but done way better. And I love it for it. Um, and also we get to see and find out that Maria Hill and Nick Fury the whole time, even throughout this film, I guess at this point, were actually the scrolls from Captain Marvel. And we see Nick Fury's talking to them, and apparently they were also fooled by the illusions, which makes me wonder if the Kree may become a villain, potentially, and wind up using this technology, maybe, possibly, further to f screw with the scrolls. Possibly is uh, in the next Captain Marvel movie, possibly? There's possibly going to be a second one, I think. Going into Phase 4, I think. So, um, yeah, overall, I enjoyed this um and that, and then we find out that he's, we see he's on a beach, but it turns out that's just a little room mirage looking thing. And we see he's on the ship with a bunch of other scrolls, like the real Nick Fury. And the way it comes across, I think he's, he's take after Thanos, he's taking shit seriously. And I think he's just, and we've just seen the formation of sword. I, I love that. And it's just, and it, it definitely, great way to cap off things. But, and just that reveal and him basically responding the same way Aunt May did when finding out he was Spider-Man. What the f... Mm. And it's like, when he's like, and oh God. I don't know what they're going to do, if they're going to time gap it or, or what, how they're going to handle that whole situation going into the next films for phase four, but I can't wait to see what they do. And I'd love to find out what they do with it. Come what, or at least the news of it in the comic con panel. It's going to be amazing. Overall, what did you guys think of it? This film rocks. If you, I didn't already tell you what you guys think about it, leave a comment below. Let me know. As always leave a comment below. Let me know. Rock that like button with thrust. If you must hit that notification bell, you know, if you want to see, so see my videos also click also link in the description for Facebook, uh, like, and follow me there. What if you do, if you do hit it, go there. And as always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, y'all.